Morning all. I'd like to show you another fantastic game this morning between Gary Kasparov and Vasily Ivanchuk, played in 1995. It was the Horgans tournament which was played in Switzerland between October 21st to November 2nd, 1995. It was also called the Credit Suisse Masters. So round robin, very strong category tournament um, with uh, participants including Kasparov, Ivanchuk, Kramnik, Yusupov, Short, Janian, Waganian, Korshnoi, Lautier, Elvis, Golko, Timon. So, um, Anand had dropped out of uh, Novigrad and was placed by Toplov. Here, Toplov was placed by Lautier. So, Korshnoi was added to the competition as a local GM to represent Switzerland. Okay, let's see this game. Kasparov playing white played e4, and Ivanchuk played the French defence, e6. And we see d4, d5, and now knight c3, not not the Tarash move, but inviting a winner. Bishop b4, e5, and now a bit of a surprise from Vasily. He plays actually b6. Very interesting move, actually. If you consider e5 is kind of weakening the light squares, black strategically sometimes wants to swap off this bishop for this bishop to try and celebrate these these weakened light squares especially you can imagine c4 and f5 being useful for knights okay but um, is black getting along with the king's side development you wonder after a3 we don't see the usual now exchange on c3 like a winner to follow up with for example c5 uh, black hasn't got that pressure that c5 would have introduced because he's played b6 anyway and actually he retreats the bishop back to f8. Now this system is actually being used by Bronstein, it's one of Bronstein's favourites. Uh, so this is very, very interesting. And you might be out outraged by the backward development. The thing is, development is only a concept in the context of how open the position is. And if you look at strategic breaks, if white wants to smash open the position with c4, this knight would have to get out of the way. So it's difficult to rip open lines here. The position is quite closed. Black has induced some light square weaknesses, and for these pawns to be fixed on dark squares. Okay, we see knight f3, which again, another pawn is blocked. If white wanted f4, f5 later, well, this knight's going to have to get out of the way. This could be a strategic break to consider as well. Knight e7, a good grip on f5. Not carrying that the bishop is on f8 h4 gaining a little bit of space h6 next bar plays h5 gaining more space of grip stopping the knight from using g6 at least and also perhaps another idea is if knight f5 g4 and this, this square is covered by the rook as well as the knight okay black now plays a5 which seems to have the intention that bishop a6 it's going to be useful at some point. Kasparov now is invoked into playing bishop b5 check and after c6 actually he doesn't put the bishop back over here uh, maybe on d3 he could accept bishop a6 and maybe either take or accept double pawns even for the c file because he has got a development advantage but actually he puts it on a4 this might be slightly controversial because of b5 later gaining a bit of time and space at the same time. Knight d7 is played and we see knight e2. So a plan for the bishop is revealed that c3 it can occupy this diagonal. b5 it goes back to b3 for a moment. c5 gaining space. Very impressive space gain on the queen side c3 knight c6 now white castles queen c7 Xmarf plays rook e1 and now again you might be a little bit surprised by this decision uh, kind of releasing tension move c4 but black has got a fast b4 going on here. It's kind of more justified than usual. He hasn't committed his king 
to being on G8 here. White's a long way from using this f pawn to smash open the position. We see knight b6, bishop f4. Okay, eyeing that queen rather dangerously, maybe preventing f6, for example. Bishop e7, bishop g3. Nat Ivanchuk plays rook b8, an interest in b4 again. Knight h2, finally, there's an interest in maybe playing f4 and f5. Now, an interesting move, queen d8. <coughs> Pardon me. So queen d8 maybe discourages f4. For example, there's options like bishop h4 here to challenge this bishop, which might be interesting. Uh, we see actually knight g4. And now b4, this break, b4, what does it actually achieve, though? Does it damage white's pawn structure a little bit more? After a takes, a takes. We see that uh, white now plays c takes b4. Maybe he's a bit concerned about this b3. It's really squashing uh, the queen side and maybe, for example, rook a8. And then carrying on, then b2 might be a target. So he's concerned about this maybe b3 possibly, and we'll check in the second pass. But Kasparov playing c takes b4 does slightly weaken the d4 pawn. And also it gives black an aggressive knight on b4. Knight takes b4, bishop b1. Bishop d7, and the bishop's eyeing that a4 square as well. Okay, this is starting to be a bit dangerous because rook a8, you know, this, this, this is a lonely rook. White well, hasn't really got any uh, targets here. The bishop's blocked in by its own pawn here. The knight's not really doing anything. There's no fast breaks. Okay, so he plays b3, which opens up the position a little bit. After rook a8, but in whose favour? Rook takes a8, queen takes a8. And now b takes c4. Knight takes c4, the knight joins its friend. These knights look quite impressive. After knight c1, black uses a forcing move now, bishop a4. The queen's the only defender of that d4 pawn. And it can't easily defend d4 uh, now. If queen f3, well, there's squares which can be made available here. It actually goes to e2. And now, embarrassingly, after queen a7, it's very difficult to defend d4. So somehow, even though the tension releasing c4 has been justified totally in this game, these impressive knights, joined by the bishop here, impressive array of pieces lined up. And with the queen going to join the party on d4 here, and nothing to defend d4, it's possible these knights are ruling out any defence of d4, this knight in particular. Queen can't go here, can't go here. Whoops, d4 is dropping. Kasparov tries knight e3, and we see queen takes d4. Knight takes c4, d takes c4. Miserable position. Looks as though knight d3 now is on the cards for d2, for example. Queen f1 is played, it's not the sort of uh, position one really wants. Okay, knight, knight d3 is actually not on the cards here. White's got enough on d3, but it just looks fairly unpleasant. Another idea is simply c3 and c2. This c pawn march is very dangerous here. So as far as queen f1 is a bit of a miserable move in a miserable position. And now Vesely just plays castling, <laughs> finally. And Kasparov actually, I think, mainly actually because of this C pawn, feels that it's a lost position, and actually resigns. Amazingly, amazing to get a resignation after someone just castles. But the assets are all there. The C pawn. I think we should flip the board at this this point. Then I've given the game away for the result. Finally, 
You thought it was Kasparov smashing up someone, didn't you? Paul Rivenchuk. No. It's, uh, it was Kasparov's only loss in this tournament, believe it or not. And he finished with, um, for his standards, a miserable 5 out of 10. Uh, both Ivanchuk and Kramnik got 7 out of 10. Ivanchuk was later to become a world champion, but, Im sorry, Kramnik was later to become a world champion, but Ivanchuk not. Um, but an amazing player, as you can see, again, from this game. Let's, let's see in this final position, what, what can White do? If he plays uh, knight e2, even queen g4 just picking off h5 is useful here. No need to rush with the c-pawn. This kind of continuation. Okay, exchange of queens. This is pretty miserable for white anyway. Pretty miserable position. So if we go back after castling, it's easy to remember that as the final move of this game. Um, if we had tried c3 here, well, the queen's attacked. We've got to move the queen. What, what else can white try? Bishop e4, c3, just to show the c-pawn power. Uh, so c2 is now threatening things like queen d2. Okay, let's go with f4. Bishop g5 becomes a resource if f5 is played. I could take on c1, queen d1. You can see the c pawn is a, is a menace in, in some of these variations. Uh, so black would be a lot better. So Kasparov didn't really want to play it out here. He just realizes he's in a very bad state. Okay, so let's let's check the game out again. Uh, so a very interesting provocative system. Uh, so you might be outra outraging opponents, especially who, those who believe that time is everything in the opening. Uh, the following gen generalization is very dogmatically about time being critical. It's a system which um, also Bronstein enjoyed great success with. Very provocative system. In fact, on chess games, Colin, the game is nicknamed uh, Provoking the Beast or something to that effect. Uh, enraging the Beast. So was the Beast enraged after A3? Bishop just retreats back. It does defend the g7 against queen g4s. But, um, and it's also a great way of getting opponents out of all the tons of opening theory. It's a less played system. So knight e7, we see h4. The engine likes white, but where, is, where are the targets in black's position? Check. Bishop a4. So possibly bishop d3, a little bit better. If bishop a6, what, what would be the options here? Say bishop f4. Is there a dynamic option of taking, or maybe it's just better to take with the queen? It's possibly more sensible just to take with the queen. But, um, okay, white shouldn't be doing... Uh, black has got an easy-to-play position, really. It's, it's a nice uh, knight here. Can it be kicked from g4? Is that just just take on e3? It's it's just a nice position for black. In fact, black's slightly better now. So easy to playness has gone up here somehow. So we go back to this artificial move, bishop a4 instead of bishop d3. Uh, you know this this easy to play swapping with the light square bishops in that variation is appealing. But now gaining space on the queen side with tempo is just a very nice luxury to have. So a bit of a controversial decision to kind of release tension again. Something which um, you'd have to play with great understanding. That white hasn't got a fast strategic break going on here to smash open the position and the open lines. So in this position it's, it's kind of more justified to go for b4. Uh, so it's all, it's with tempo gaining on this bishop anyway, this this b4 break. This does make way for f4, f5 potentially. Let's have a look here on f4 if bishop h4 was actually a resource. Not needed actually. I don't think, actually bishop h4 might not be a good, good idea, in fact. 
it's knight f3 okay it's going into white's plan white would then can't be coming with f5 there's no point doing that so uh let's see on f4 here after this queen retreat bishop d7 it's a bit petrosian esque as well it's like provocation strategy and petrosian uh was able to do that successfully in a lot of games and uh, still not lose too many and win a lot in the process sometimes um so anyway here it just just seems as though white is some way from achieving f5 with any effect uh but i guess it's it's preparation that um the bishop's not eyeing the queen here otherwise f5 would have been possible so it's kind of prophylaxis uh, one one could say against f4 f5 the queen retreat even if this battery doesn't mean anything for bishop h4 okay so knight g4 again the engine kind of well it's about equal now after knight g4 what was actually preferred technically knight f4 now here against knight f4 bishop h4 is all of a sudden of interest from an engine point of view so maybe the battery is sometimes useful and now b4 this isn't so bad there's a big difference here without f4 f5 exchanging off the dark square bishop here it's it's okay for black okay so we see knight g4 b4 is black really threatening, threatening b3 yes possibly for knight a4 to continue so let's see. Um, White took on on b4 here. Probably one of the better moves. Now, if you play bishop b1, trying to keep the chain intact and d4 intact. So let's go with b3. Uh, what will black be threatening here? Rook a8. I think rook a8 is the major threat. Let's, let's give White a move. Okay, knight f4. Is white threatening something on the chain or not yet? If we go rook a8, if we go like this and go back. There seems to be pressure on the king side, but it's without any pawn breakthrough. It doesn't seem that effectual. This a file. I'm just wondering about this a file infiltration here. Is it going to be uh, an effect? Knight a4, queen a5. White's well, getting slightly passive now because of this b2 and c3 under fire. Okay, we're some way away from the game, but um, possibly, I don't know, it looks as though White's doing better than the game continuation here. So it seems Kasparov was kind of enraged here to try and actively destroy Black's activities but in the process he's giving black really good knights soon so he didn't want to uh, humbly accept being squashed on the queen side here which would have kept d4 intact though so here d4 becomes uh, more vulnerable as we see black seems to technically be doing well uh, even b3 is making um, yeah I don't know it's a kind of we can say in retrospect that it's is is there any more solid moves we can say in retrospect or is, is blacks already doing very well here has got targets b2 looks looks uh miserable that pawn on b2 uh, so this kind of position again d4 is also a problem so blacks doing very nicely in this sort of position so let's go back. Look, Sparth played the active b3. But uh, it's kind of playing on where the opponent's got the advantage in principle. But um, maybe he's, he's relying on very specific uh, calculations here. So b takes, knight takes. We see knight c1. I'm trying to get rid of the b4 knight, but um, maybe this bishop a4, is the power of bishop a4 is, is very. It's very good here. Drives the queen away from d4, and now queen a7. So rendering white's plan of knight d3 a little bit too slow. 
that can just take on d4 here if knight d3. So black's doing very, very well now after this. I mean, this, this is a very powerful sequence. After bishop a4, very powerful sequence, queen a7. Uh, the whole the whole black strategy is being justified here of going for that b4 and the threat of b3 has caused white to kind of that chain has been damaged and ridiculously yeah these pieces are kind of just irrelevant to being able to hold up d d4 the rook can't do anything d4 is ridiculously being lost here in this position in broad daylight so uh, queen takes d4 and then the c pawn is now black's uh, huge assets here, and after castles, the game ends in style with White just resigning here. Wow! So, was the beast enraged? I would say so. Uh, <laughs> and just castling here, it just you know, Black's got loads of uh, resources coming up for that sea pawn, uh, just to drive the sea pawn, if nothing else. As we saw. Okay, hope you enjoyed that game. Comments and questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.